YouTube, back in the garage shop again, doing kind of a little addition to the sandblasting cabinet videos. Uh, this is gonna be an air compressor upgrade, but I'm doing it. Uh, this is my Coleman Black Max uh, PowerMate. Not 100% sure of its CFM output, but uh, it does pretty decent for uh, doing everything. It keeps up pretty good. Uh, what we're doing is adding a cooler, a uh, after cooler to the compressor. A lot of compressors come with them. Uh, this one did not, obviously, so I'm adding one. What we're putting on it is the Durrell 15300 uh, 8 in half inch uh, tubing, 16 or 16 dash 16 pass core, whatever that means. But uh, yeah, I went ahead and made me up some brackets. We're gonna drill a couple holes, mount it here. Got one to mount on the shield back there, or the shield mounting bracket, anyways. And uh, yeah, that'll be there. We'll have coming out of the compressor over into the cooler and then coming out of the cooler into this uh, moisture trap I got off Amazon. Uh, picked it, it's got a good flow through, it's half inch. It's got a good uh, flow through it. Uh, good, I guess a good CFM rating and it's an auto drain when the pressure kicks off. So this one, this compressor is not building pressure when the, compressor, uh, the pump is off. This line doesn't have any pressure in it. It reliefs out here. So that will relieve all the pressure off this, cause the auto drain to open and drain all of the water that's in the system. So we'll be able to have that there, and we'll be able to come right out of this into this, out, up, which, see, it has to go up so the water will drain back naturally into this, and then go up into the tank. So that's how we're gonna do that. Should help with moisture a little bit, and uh, we're going to be putting this, uh, this is a Napu pneumatics, however you pronounce that. There's the brand right there, uh, filter. Uh, regulator very nice piece i like this i've been running on this compressor for a while uh catches up pretty good amount of moisture even being right off the tank this is not really where you want one of these these are better off if they're mounted further away from the compressor tank so it kind of because the air pretty much just blows right through there and you don't catch a lot of moisture uh, but so this is going to go on the sandblaster so to get one other one for the compressor i went ahead and upgraded to another one I went with a half inch model. It's a bit bigger, flows a little more air. Uh, it's got a, it's got a gauge too, just like the other one. Uh, but yeah, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just get two half inch to half inch uh, barb to uh, MPT adapters and just screw them into each end of this. Probably put a two by four on the board or the wall there, mount it on the wall, just run this over and put a split in this hose. Mount it right there for right now. Because this is not going to stay here, this is in its permanent home. I eventually am going to build a compressor house behind the garage over in that area. And uh, I don't know if I've showed you guys the hoses in this, but I got two drop downs on this wall, two drop downs on that wall, one drop down by the bench. Uh, but this is the main valve up here that will turn the air on and off for the shop that'll run outside into the compressor building. And then hopefully we have nice clean air I did not put drop downs and drains on the the uh, drop down legs. Probably should have. Uh, hindsight's 2020. But normally anything that runs here is blow guns and just basic stuff. So moisture shouldn't hurt them too bad. So yeah. Anyways, if I do get moisture and I just plug the blow gun in like this and just run it, blow some air out of it. So yeah, that's not a problem there. Uh, we come over here. Like I said, I'm building the air compressor outside in the in a building. So we'll go ahead and have this gauge that reads the pressure in the system because we, normally I keep this regulated at about 100 pounds. Uh, I'll probably regulate it to 100 pounds to 125 pounds coming into the shop. Not really anything needs more than 125 pounds to uh, function correctly. So that we'll probably keep that at that coming into the shop. But I kept this gauge here so I can tell if the, just say I don't have the kick compressor on and uh, which I was kicking on with the breaker, and uh, which is not a very good idea, but uh, say I don't need to kick it on, say it's got 100 pounds in it still, I just need to blow something off, I'll turn the air on, I can see it's got 100 pounds in it, blow whatever I need to blow off, uh, shut the air off, and not kick the compressor on. Uh, so yeah, that's how it goes, I got that over them kick downs there, that's where I'm gonna run the compressor, or the, the compressor with the sandblaster, probably right in that area off that one. I got a 50 foot Flexzilla co uh, hose reel, which is very handy. I like it. It's actually mounted up top there. I have uh, pieces to run anything up top. And I thought about running the blast cabinet off the top and running a hose down. 
because that would actually let any moisture fall down in that uh, tube and uh, shouldn't have a problem there with it falling down. So yeah, they run down to that tube or, and then just go to the blast cabinet. And obviously we have the regulator filter uh, that's on the compressor now going to the blast cabinet or going on the blast cabinet. I do plan to get two 100 pound propane bottles to add to the system to add storage. They're about 23.6 gallons a piece. So we're gonna be adding a little over, what, uh, 46 pounds, or not 46, 46 gallons of uh, additional storage. That should put us around about 100, p 100 pounds of capacity. Capacity helps uh, in blasting and everything. This compressor may not be able to keep up, but if it does fill both tanks up, you take a break, come back, you have that 100 pound capacity to uh, blast. So we'll see how this compressor does. We may end up getting a different compressor but uh, this one will get the have the after cooler and uh, it'll be ready to roll. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit. I'm going to get these holes drilled, mount these brackets, and then get that mounted. And uh, we will cut you guys back on when we get a little farther. It's been a few hours. And I got a pretty good chunk of work done. I'm short one AN uh, oh, tube nut and ferrule. I also forgot the fitting for my compressor that goes from half inch MPT to uh, dash eight uh, AN or JIC. And I will grab that tomorrow that I can build the top tube, but I'm still short a nut and uh, we will have to change that out or get that so I can get the compressor back to functioning because right now the comp I don't have a compressor. I've got the little 125 pounds that's in the tank, I made sure to pump the compressor right before I did this. And then I'm kind of stuck with that for right now, or I'll have to go get my little 150 PSI uh, port cable and plumb it in here. So anyways, this is what we got so far. I've got this bracket made that uh, I was gonna try to put this closer, but I couldn't I couldn't make that bend. I couldn't S back into it. So I built this bracket. It's kind of melted the mount a little bit of angle. If I could have made that shorter or moved my cooler over that way a little more, I would have. But this is this factory line that went up here. I just rebent it. Uh, I used them spring uh, tube benders. It worked really good for this. There's plenty of room underneath all this. Uh, I got it bent pretty good. Uh, I didn't want to mess with this fitting in here because that has the uh, check valve in it for the tank. So I did not want to mess with that. I just wanted to make sure. I just I wanted that just to maintain and be factory. So this has the factory line that went up to the compressor. Uh, this is a new line that I bent and uh, put the flared. I also flared the end of this to go to eight in or eight or yeah to dash eight in and then dash eight here and there and then I've got dash eight up here obviously and then we will have dash eight here coming around to that. That's literally the only hose I have to make. And then the uh, after cooler is installed. Uh, this says max 140 degrees Fahrenheit on it. So I'm hoping we can, uh, hopefully after the after cooler and stuff, that will cool it down to that much. Uh, it should be not too bad. I don't think it will be that bad, especially if I do put a fan on that. And I figured out up here I can wire in, I can split the 220 legs in half and use the one leg to power my adapter uh, because this is on a 30 amp circuit and I think that's what it calls for. Or it says 230, 15 amp and I've got it on a 30 amp circuit. So we should have plenty. I mean, and the 12 volt inverter is not gonna draw very much to run the electrical fan. It's gonna put out a 10 amps. So I'll build a little thing to hold it. I'm gonna cut this bracket off here and uh, I may, I may keep it and use it to mount that on there, but I'm going to go ahead and pull these all off anyways. I got to drill a couple holes for the back bracket. I said I leaned back there and got back there to do that. But once I get those drilled, I'll pull all the brackets off and uh, paint them just so they don't rust and look like crap. They'll just look a little better black. Maybe I might go through and clean the compressor a little bit because she's kind of a really mess. I do want to actually go through and change compressor oil in this. I don't know what it takes for compressor oil. Uh, I may have to look into it. I did move that sticker. That was down there. It's up here on the uh, motor now. I just moved it because it was uh, a lot easier. 
or wasn't really a lot easier, but I can read it still up here. So yeah, so I got to go ahead and get that fitting another nut and ferrule for there. I'm probably gonna put that fitting in here, then remember build that, bend that line, get that line bent, cut, and flared. Actually, I can't flare this end. I'll have to flare this end and get it bent and cut, and then I'll have to get the ferrule and nut, and then bend that end. I think it's gonna come out somewhat, come out with just a nice bend here, probably like this, come out, and then kind of come up here and then bend back down into there. It's gonna come out, bend down in there, nice. Just a nice swoop. Uh, so, like I said, though, I'm going to wire one thing on here for the, probably the fan, the inverter for the fan. And then I, on the one leg, they'll be hot all the time when there's power to this. I'm going to put a tank drain in it. So that'll be next on the list of stuff to get. I'll put a tank drain and it'll be powered into one of the legs too. So anytime the breaker's on when it's in the hut, the uh, tank drain will be running. Uh... And the compressor will kick on and off like it's supposed to. The fan is going to be on the switched side, so you actually have to push down, or actually have to have it on, and it kicks on. It'll kick the fan on. It'll actually charge the brick, converting 120 AC to 12 volt DC, running the fan on the cooler. It's going to be, I'm hoping it'll fit on this side of the cooler, so I can pull air in, which will bring air up and kind of blow, the, also bring it, the hot air through here to cool this off, but also blow air across the cylinder and help cool it. This blows air too. Really, if you wanted to, without having run a fan, you could, uh, and if you're lucky and have a shroud, you could mount it in front of this and it'd pull the heat through there. Uh, but I'm gonna put a fan on it just because I like making things overly technical and making them difficult. But uh, yeah, I uh, also got rid of the 3 8 uh, oh, the 3 8 uh, dryer regulator put the half inch one on and uh yeah it's gonna work pretty good there for right now it's gonna go obviously gonna go out in the air compressor shed once we get uh once we get uh there anyways uh it's gonna have a it's gonna have three quarter pecs come right out of here it's gonna go from a half inch to three quarter pecs and go straight from this to three quarter pecs into the building that's what this is going to be after the compressor. And then uh, we will be tying the other two tanks. If I do get the other two tanks, we're going to tie them in between here and there. And then it'll be, be this tank, compressor, the compressor. It'll be the, second, the first tank, second tank, and then to the uh, regulator filter. So then you'll come in here and do all of its stuff and be dispersed. I'm going to have to modify the regulator for this because if I want it to work correctly there's an, I want the air to come in this way and to come out this way so I'm gonna have to flip the mounts over here which isn't hard to do they just slide or take them to Allen bolts out and flip flop that around I'll have to take the gauge out take this plug out flop this it's got some glue on there but I'll take the glue off put the, this gauge on this side and then put the mounts on this side and then it'll just bolt on like so. Air will come in this side on the back side there and then come out and go into the cabinet there. So that is the plan with that. So yeah, we'll catch you guys on a second with it running and working. So I'm also ordering the fan and the inverter. So we'll be putting those on as well. So see you guys in a second. And it'll be a few days for me. So see you guys in one second. It's been a few days. I've been kind of under the weather for like last probably four or five days. So I haven't done a lot of stuff in the shop. I'm ready to get some stuff ordered. And uh, first thing I did, I got stuff for the air compressor in the blast cap. But the first thing I got ordered was more Evil Energy uh, eight in uh, tube fittings for the eight in uh, like the ferrule and the nut. So I got those. I have, I'll have one extra. And then we'll have the one we need. Then I bought this Maxon, uh, it's like a seven inch radiator fan. Of course, that'd be in 12 volts. I ended up buying an Astro I, or AI uh, AC to DC converter, 110 to 240, well, 100 volts, 240 volts. Uh, puts out uh, 12 volt DC, 10 amps. So that should be more than this thing pulls like four amps continuously on and like pulls up to like eight to 10 amps on turn on. So 
I plugged it in and actually tested it earlier, so it does work and runs the fan. I didn't run it for a continuously long period of time. I am gonna actually probably plug it in and let it run for a bit and see how hot this gets. And if it, uh, I'm gonna put a 10 amp fuse in between this and this, and uh, we'll see how long it will actually, we're gonna get rid of our uh, plug in here and uh, just go to straight to a plug in or just connection of some sort, so. That's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna wire it into the leg on the compressor. So when the compressor kicks on, it kicks the fan on as well. So yeah, I can actually get that mounted to the compressor or mounted to the radiator and or the after cooler and then get my nut put on and flared real quick if I wanted to do that tonight. And then the compressor could at least function if it needed to. So it'll be able to check how many thousands of leaks we have also. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kind of get this system wired up and see how it's going to work. So catch you guys in a second. Okay, for a little demonstration, I have it just plugged into this outlet over here, but this is the 12 volt adapter. Uh, got a 10 amp fuse in here, got it hooked up to the uh, little radiator there, just pulling the air through that. The motor does get pretty warm. This is only going to run though when the compressor is running. So it'll be wired into this. I haven't got wired in that. I'm just showing you like this right now. And I don't think I'm not even under 100 pounds, so the pressure's not even kicked on. I got that flared, so we're gonna go ahead and see if something explodes. Let's see what we got going on. Oh, nice. The tube's already warm to the touch. Had to be moving on a second. This tube's warm. Not in us, too. Not warm. It's not even starting to get warm yet. Air's not warm. This tube is starting to get warm. This is semi-warm, but not horrid. This is obviously going to have to be put somewhere, probably put some on some dampening pads to get some of the vibration out of it. But right now, it's just sitting on there. Yes. Radiator is warm out here, down. You can feel it starting to get these tubes warm. I'm sure after continuous running, this will get hot. Yeah, that, you can't touch on to that. That's hot. Good cold air coming into this. So, yeah. Nice cold air. We're getting kind of warm. Not bad. I think that fan actually is, this feels like it's extracting heat. So that's a good deal. Right here's semi warm. That one's, you can still touch that one. Definitely touch, check, touch the second one and the third one. So that fan is definitely pulling some heat out of that too. I think it's gonna work. It should definitely help keep some of the uh, air out of the system. I'm mostly doing auto tank drain, and I gotta put a fix a fitting over here. This fitting's leaking for some reason, pretty bad. So I gotta fix that. That's where a lot of my volume is just getting pumped out. But yeah, it seems to be working. And this does help blow air across the head of the, the head of the compressor. I can touch it. That's it's not really warm yet. This also does too. There's a lot more air in this setup. Yeah, as you guys can see, it did collect a pretty good amount of water in the little bit that it was just running. So yeah, as you guys can see, that does work. So yeah, so we're gonna kick her on a second. Get that off. It does build up pretty good air pressure in the whole setup. So you can't even turn it. Yeah, there's a lot of air in that, really. But this does trap a pretty good amount of moisture. The problem is, I think it's gonna run continuously. It's gonna fill that up too quick, and that will be an issue. I think it will run too much and that will be an issue and it will fill that up too quick. But I do think that's going to actually keep this a lot cooler. So the fan definitely should help. We're gonna take this apart, cut this cord up, get a mount, make some place for this to set that won't vibrate real bad. Probably take some foam and wrap it or some rubber, probably some rubber and get it somewhere because this thing will vibrate and Isn't it caused cast cord assembly converter crack? Blah blah blah. 
it's outside of its intended use, but I'm pretty sure this is probably outside of its intended use. So yeah, all I got to do yet is to wire this in here. This is hot. Yeah, it's it does cool down pretty quick though. But uh, this is a little bit lower or above the radiator, which does mean there'll be water in that, but that should be a problem. It'll cook it out of there. Or at least it'll every time it'll blow it into this. So yeah, but uh, yeah, this should catch most of the water that this is making that should help cool the air coming in the tank and keep it from in the tank help keep the moisture in the tank from building up uh, this here out should get a lot of the moisture and stuff out of the system and then we have another set on the blaster or the blasting cabinet itself so that should filter out some more and then i think i'm gonna put another filter on top of these uh, I don't know yet. I may actually plumb it into the top bung up there and down to this unit. So that's what I'll probably do. Just that'll act as a uh, drip uh, drip leg. So even though I have one, two, kind of three drip legs in this building before the blasting cabinet. But uh, anyways, that should help. Uh, pretty good. So I got to figure out where I got to mount that and then uh, wire it in. Uh, other than that, it should be a pretty uh, simple job. And uh, probably it's going to gonna go ahead and just finish it up on camera because uh, it'll just be pretty easy to do. I'll get it done. And uh, once we get the compressor shack built and stuff and get it out there, I'll probably do more of a video because I'm going to do some more stuff to it. Uh, on that radiator side, I want that towards the wall uh, of the shack because I actually want to duck into it and put a vent on the side of the shack. So that fan kicks on, it will blow cool air through the radiator or summer air, winter air, whatever. It'll blow through that radiator, keeping the radiator cool. It won't be the compressor shack, hot compressor shack air after the thing's been running for a while. It'll blow it across the motor as well. So that'll help blow the cool air into the crest shack down at the bottom i'll probably have another vent on the other side that takes the air out so it'll just keep also circulating air in the compressor shack so it doesn't have to set there just get stupid hot inside the compressor shack so anyways guys i think that'll be it for this video i'm a little stuffed up i'm a little tired i've only been out here for probably 30 minutes and i'm already tired <laughs> so yeah it's been a long week and I haven't done anything just other than fighting this sickness. So anyways, guys, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Uh, yeah. Oh. We'll see you guys in the next one.